What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of Hustle with Jesse W and today we're going to be talking about where GME might go next. All right, so check it out. All right, guys, let's go ahead and jump into this video. But before we do, I want you to understand what we're going to do here. We're going to dive into the chart. We're going to dive into the story. And in order to understand where, you know, my opinion on based on where Jamie is going to go next, you, we have to come to some sort of understanding here on why it did what it did. So we're going to start from square one and then go to where it's been and then, you know, go where it's going, where I think it's going to go next. All right. So do me a quick favor, smash that like button for me and subscribe to the channel if you haven't. And you know what? In the comment section, leave me a comment letting me know where you think GME is going to go next. All right. So just throw out your own price target down there and let me know. Uh, or you could just put rocket ships, whatever, diamond hands, if you will. So GME, let's go ahead and dive into the charts here. Let's put GME. And let's see where GME is at. Well, so GME closed off on Friday at $52.33 according to this chart here. Now, let's scroll back some and let's see the action. Okay, so this is a three minute chart. Let's go over to the daily chart. Oh, wow. Okay. So we know this already. Okay, so this is perfect. Okay, so GME, we all know, you know, we started to get a lot of buying coming in. You know, it was a big short position in here. We started to get that squeeze. You know, it was very, very light, just very methodical. It's a big squeeze because we've gone, all right, over time from, you know, $3 and change. We kind of like sat here in the $4 and change. And then we started to get the squeeze happening, little squeeze, all right? I mean, if you really think about it from September to December, it was a big squeeze, but it was very slow. It was a lot of accumulation going on here, a big tug of war, but the longs were winning it. And then on this day right here, boom, that's the boom day. That's when the big squeeze happened, okay? 19 all the way up here, right in front of 500 bucks, okay? So why did this happen? Well, we all know there was a huge short precisions in here by Melvin Capital and such. And then we all know Wall Street Bets got involved and of course, we all know that Friday where we had that big gamma squeeze and every single option that was available closed off in the money. So major covers had to be, you know, occurring and we had the giant move. All right. Simple as that. We all know this wasn't because of a fundamental catalyst. There was no groundbreaking GME news. There was nothing that fundamentally could send this stock from you know, what I would consider a true value on it in the 20s to almost $500. There just wasn't, okay? We know that was just a giant short squeeze. So we know why we've gone from point, let's call it A, okay, to point B, right? We had the short squeeze. We had some consolidation here as more people started finding out about it and more shorts started to pile on in on it because, you know, it's not a $40 stock. And then we had the big push, we had news catalysts as far as like news, talking about it on the news, like GME, Wall Street Bets, all the drama, which brought in a wave, a huge wave of new people to the market, downloading Robinhood, downloading Webull. We all know the Robinhood fiasco. If you're sick of Robinhood, check out Webull, link in the description section below. All right, you can download the app, fund your account with a hundred bucks, and you're gonna get two free stocks to start off. So that's free money. Like, why would you say no to free money? Who says no to free market? I mean, free money. If you went by like, you know, a restaurant and like, oh, the appetizer's on us. Are you going to be like, no, no, no. I don't want you to give me anything for free. Who does that? Download the app, fund your account with a hundred bucks and get your two free stocks. Now, all those new traders kept piling on in here long. So then you had more shorts covering. You just had this huge push, huge, huge, huge push. Then... We know we had the Robin Hood fiasco, the Charles Schwab fiasco, the Fidelity fiasco, the E-Trade fiasco, every big broker. We know we had that fiasco going on. And what was that? Well, we know that they kind of paused trading on this thing and that caused a subsequent crash because people started to get scared. They couldn't buy more shares and all that good stuff. So, all right, so we know that happened. However, we also know that people started taking profits. Cause let's be real here. If you were crazy or had a lot of money or just YOLO'd it and you bought a lot of GME in here 
and you woke up four days later and your GME was up here and you were up tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, millions of dollars, which happened across the board, okay, to a lot of new people. What, what are you gonna do? Are you just gonna keep holding here? Well, I know a lot of people held and we did videos about those nut jobs, but a lot of people were smart and they sold and they booked gargantuan profits, life-changing money. And a lot of people started booking those profits and a lot of people started to panic sell and we had the subsequent crash. Now, what has happened since? Well, if you look at the chart here, we've pulled back pretty hard. Now, looking at this a little bit clearer, this big giant pullback, the volume isn't, isn't that big compared to the volume on the run-up. The volume on the run-up is pretty substantial. GME is holding on to this $50, $40 level, that between 45 to like 50 bucks. It's holding on to it fairly well, okay? It's holding on to it fairly well. I think we could see GME start to make little moves and little pops towards that $100 level. I just think that every time it gets up there, it's going to get sold into. You're going to get shorts piling on it. You're going to have people, you're going to get people back holding it from two, three, four hundred dollars and they're going to start selling into it. Just kind of like getting rid of a little bit of those losses. What you have to understand is that this is a little bit of a bear flag going on here. It's trying to hold on to the 50 day moving average, which is decent, but the volume on this bounce attempt is not good. This is a very, very weak volume. Had it gotten down here to the 50 day, bounced off of it on a big volume bar like this one, all right, and started holding up here in the 80s, maybe the 70s, you could be like, oh, hmm, this might make a push up to the $200 area. Oh, 150, 180 bucks. Let's see where these ca this candle's at, this gap. There you go, 150, I knew it, boom. Okay, so the 150, $160 area. If it ever breaks above that, you will have a gap fill to the 200s, but, I don't know that that's gonna happen, but hey, anybody can be wrong, right? It needs a lot of volume to come into this thing to get it to bounce, and it's gonna need a boatload of volume, more volume than this, more volume than that, to get it to squeeze back up here, because there's a ton of people who are underwater, an absolute ton of money in this range that chased it and bought it up here. So the reality is you have two outcomes here. Okay, one outcome is it begins to hold this 50 day moving average and we start to get bounces into the $100 zone. I think those get sold into, 100 to $115 get sold into. Every time it taps that, I think it comes back down. All right, that's my opinion on it. If it ever breaks and holds that 115 level, then you have to watch the 160 level for the next resistance, okay? Look at it, it's right here, it's plain as day. Look at it right there, this top and this top. That's what you have to watch. If it ever breaks and holds that level, then, well, my friends, you can see a push to like that $200 level, okay? Do I think the chances are good of that happening? I don't think they're good of that happening. I don't, all right? What do I think is more, than, more likely to happen? I think we'll fade it down here to $30 level eventually here before, you know, like if you told me, hey, Jesse, what do you think the, the odds are? I think the odds are better. I'm not gonna give you a number. Uh, I think the odds are better for it to come down to the 30s then it to go to the 200. And that's just what I think, all right? That's just my opinion. That's what I think on the subject as far as GME goes. I think you could see it here at this 100-day moving average in the 30s uh, a lot easier than you will see it up here in the 200s, all right? And that's what I think just looking at the chart technically and going over, you know, these, these, technical, uh, these technical analysis levels. That's pretty much it. There's nothing else I think that, that, that can be done here as far as that goes. I mean, if they came out with some crazy good news, then yeah, because now you're gonna have more technical and fundamental catalysts lining up. But if they don't come out with some crazy news, I think you see this back in the 30s. And you know, over, overall, if it gets back down there, you'll eventually see it in the 20s, which, which is where I think GME belongs, okay? Uh, but that's just what I think, you know? Let me know, drop in the comment section, drop me your analysis. Let me know where you think GME is gonna go you can either just throw the number out there, put your rocket ships or your diamonds, 
or you can give me a, a, a good analysis. You know, give me, give me a well thought out analysis, drop it down there as well, and I'll be happy to chat with you guys about it. But I have no position in GME. I just have zero position in GME. I don't own GME. I don't own GME in my Roth IRA. I don't own GME in my taxable account. This is my, one of my taxable accounts. You see it right here. I don't own GME. And I don't want to own GME. All right. I don't. Will I trade GME? I mean, I did trade it. I traded it in. Where did I trade it? I, well, I did a swing trade on it from way back here somewhere. Uh, you know, I sold, made a, what was it, 1300 bucks? The video's up on YouTube. And then I day traded it one day in the 200s, I think it was, and, I, and that was an after hours trade. And I also traded it right before the market closed uh, that day, I remember it. Uh, but I don't own any GME, and frankly, I don't want to own any GME. GME. But anyways, guys, let me know your thoughts. Drop them in the comment section below. Remember to subscribe to the channel if you haven't. Hit that notification bell so you're alerted when I upload my next video. And I'll catch you on the next one.